Hey guys, I wanted to make a video today about the top 10 ways that I coped with my depression. Now these ways may not necessarily work for you, but I wanted to just talk about them in case, you know, any if any of these worked for you, um, that's a great way to kind of start helping you cope with your depression. So number one is to go see a doctor or a therapist. Um, if you think that you have signs of, if, if you think you have signs of depression or anxiety or any other mental illness, you definitely want to go see a doctor right away or, you know, a therapist. Um, don't be afraid. Um, you know, doctors and therapists deal with this stuff every day and you have nothing to be ashamed about. Um, go, by going to see a doctor and therapist, they're going to help you get on the right path and kind of make a plan um, to help you, uh, you know, be, for your well-being. So do not be afraid to go see a doctor or therapist. Um, that's my number one thing. If you think you have depression or anxiety or anything else, go see a doctor. Go talk to your doctor about it right away. They even may recommend a therapist for you. Number two is research. So you definitely want to research about depression. Um, I thought I knew all about depression. Um, I thought it was something that I can get over just really quickly. But, uh, you know, I, the more I learned about it, the more I realized that, hey, this is just my body. It's my chemical reactions in my head. Um, you know, I definitely don't know all about it. I'm not a doctor or anything, but uh, I, I think I have a pretty good understanding of depression. So by having that understanding, you know, you'll be able to recognize specific triggers that may kind of relapse you back to a depression. Um, the more educated you are, I think the better you will be to uh, handle the situation um, if, you know, a trigger or something like that comes up. Number three is to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. Now, for me, I was getting way too much sleep. I was getting 12, 16 hours of sleep a day. And ultimately, that made me be uh, vitamin D deficient. I, since I would never get sunlight, I was sleeping all day. Uh, you know, I didn't have the, the proper nutrients and vitamins and all that stuff. So for some people, depression makes them sleep way too much. For others, they can't sleep at all. So, um, you know, that's something that you can talk to your doctor with um, or your therapist about is sleep. Um, try to shoot for that 7 to 8 range. You know, anything less than 7 to 8 has side effects and ha even having more than seven to eight hours of sleep has side effects so that's probably the good amount of sleep that you need every night now number four is exercise now if you talked to me maybe three or four months ago exercise was something that i never thought i could do um since i was so lethargic i did not want to get out of bed i did not want to do any physical activity it was so tiring to do i just didn't have the energy to do anything. Now, as I started to, you know, take medication and, you know, slowly get the steps, um, by now, four months later, you know, I've, I've been able to go to the gym, lift weights, um, do a little bit more strenuous types of exercises. But if you're, when you're starting with, with depression, I would not recommend going straight to the gym, you know, pushing a ton of weight or running on the treadmill for an hour. Just start off what you can do. Just start off slow, start off light. Um, if all you could do is go around and walk around your house or your apartment complex or walk to your car and back, that's perfect. That's a great first step. When I was uh, really in the depths of my depression, uh, my fiance and I, we would just go around the lake. And, you know, I had to take breaks because I would get tired. And, uh, you know, I never really wanted to do it, but I had to really push myself uh, to go do that exercise and you know, it's a way better alternative to um, You know eating a ton of food or any other kind of negative coping uh, Skill out there. So I would definitely recommend starting off slow with the exercise and then as you start to feel better Maybe you could go out and start pushing yourself a little bit more number five is to eat well when I have the depths of my depression I would not cook any meal for myself uh, I would drive through McDonald's, Burger King, whatever, and just eat fast food, you know, and that starts to add up, you know, not only in pounds, but money-wise. Um, I wasn't taking care of my body. I wasn't getting enough, enough nutrients um, or vitamins. I was just eating fat and processed foods. So uh, I'm not going to say cut out all those immediately because... I know that it would be hard to, you know, start cooking your meals all by yourself or, you know, um, getting up early and cooking your meals every single day. But start just cutting back on fast food, you know. 
maybe once or twice a week. If you know, if you're for someone who does fast food or processed meals, you know, every day of the week, then maybe just cut back one day, and then the next week cut back two days. Um, you know, I still eat fast food once or twice a week, um, so I'm slowly kind of cutting it back, um, and you're gonna start feeling a lot better, start losing weight, and uh, yeah, so just try and try and cut back on some of those fast foods and processed foods. Number six is surround yourself with positive people. If there are people in your life who aren't supporting you during your depression, then I would kick them out, um, you know, if you can. You know, if it's family, you know, it's probably hard to kick them out or if they're really close friends. Um, but uh, I've kind of always, you know, if they're really your friends, then I think that, you know, they would support you. If they really love you, then they would support you no matter what. If you're surrounding yourself with negative people, then you're not going to get better. And, you know, they're always going to be nagging and saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. Surround yourself with people who you trust, who you love, um, and it doesn't have to be a ton of people. You know, my support group is basically my fiance and my mom and my family, and that was it, and that was good enough for me. Um, you know, uh, if you don't ha kind of have the family or the friends to support you, then my next step, number uh, seven, is to join a support group. Um, when I was in the hospital, uh, I was kind of not really forced into a support group, but that's kind of some of the treatment that I had was kind of like a support group. And we still meet uh, about twice, once every two weeks, I think. Once every two weeks at just a local uh, coffee shop. And that's my support group. You know, I can air some things out. Um, and, you know, it's people who are going through, through the same things as you are. So definitely look into a support group. Um, you, you know, they, they could, uh, if you go to um, maybe like a local hospital or something like that, or you can ask your doctor about support groups or search online. Um, there's a lot of information out there about local support groups with people with depression. Um, you know, it may seem kind of awkward at first, but, uh, you know, once you get to know the people, um, you know, they're just like you. They just, they just, um, they're just like you. They have depression or, you know, anxiety or anything. And it's good to be surround yourself with people who also have kind of the same struggles that you're having. Uh, my next step is, what are we on, number uh, eight, is to journal or start a blog. And I didn't journal um, at all, um, but I did start a blog. And I don't do it as much as I probably should, but uh, I basically blog because I want to spread the message out for others and see if I can help. You know, even if I touch one life, that would be perfect, you know. Um, but uh, it's a good way to get down your feelings and your thoughts, and you can kind of go back and track, you know, okay, I had a bad day here, what can I do the next day to make it a little bit better? Or, you know, uh, one of the things my therapist said was kind of rate your days, you know, maybe yesterday was a 6 out of 10, what could I do to make it a 7 out of 10? Or yesterday was a 2 out of 10, what could I do to make it a little bit better? So you can go back and kind of track and see your improvement, or if you need to work a little bit harder, um, blogging or journaling is a good way to do that next is uh, number nine is to reward yourself so uh one of the biggest kind of hurdles that i had to go over uh when i was kind of in the depths of my depression was to reward myself for really basic things so um you know simple things like doing the laundry or doing the dishes to me that kind of felt like really kind of stupid silly things like everyone does that right you know, it's not hard to do the dishes, but when you have depression, uh, it could be, you know, it's, you, know, you see all those dishes pile up and you're like, oh my God, this is like such a big hurdle. It's such a big mountain to climb. I can't do this. Um, but reward yourself, you know, um, if you, sometimes, uh, if I'm eating well for a couple days out of the week, then I'll go reward myself with some, you know, junk food or something. Um, you know, if I did something really good, uh, maybe I'll go buy myself a treat or something where, you know, treat yourself to something nice. Um, if you're making progress, you know, it's a good feeling to, to earn something when you're working so hard to kind of cope with your depression. So reward yourself in whatever way you think will, uh, be best for you. Um, you know, I went and bought out, you know, the new call of duty when I put some good weeks together. So, you know, 
whatever works for you, you know. Uh, and the last thing, number 10, is realize that you are not alone. Uh, I know that this is probably one of the hardest things to do, um, especially when you're really deep and down and you just, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Realize that you're not alone. You know, there's people out there just like you and me who struggle with depression every single day. There's probably someone out there who struggles with it way more than you or, um, uh, not or, you know, um, there's, there's always someone out there who is probably going through the same thing that you are. So you're not alone. Other people who have had depression or anxiety or mental illness have overcome it. And, you know, you have the power inside of you to overcome it as well, or, you know, cope with it as best as you can. So realize that you're not alone. And, you know, I know it's kind of cliche to say that things will get better, but if you, um, you know, take the right steps and you try your best, um, you know, things will eventually start to get better. It may not, you know, I thought that things would get better for me really instantaneously, but it's probably, you know, four or five months. And now I'm starting to finally starting to finally feel like things are slowly getting back to where I was before my major, major uh, depression hit. So those are my top 10 things that I use to cope with depression. Like I said, they may not all work for you. Um, you can tweak them in any way you want that kind of um, helps helps you the most. Um, check out my blog at gamingwithdepression.com. I'll leave a link for you guys in the uh, description below. Um, yeah, that's basically about it. Um, if you have any other uh, kind of coping mechanisms that work for you, leave a comment below. I'll check them out and maybe, you know, maybe I haven't even thought about them yet. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching this video. And um, I hope that some of these coping skills will help you overcome your depression or your anxiety or any of the other mental illnesses that you uh, are, are suffering from. So thank you guys so much. Um, I'll see you in the next video.